Radio. And now, Ham Radio Concepts presents another exciting amateur radio video, keeping ham radio operators informed with a thorough look at the new products. Now, here's your host, Eric, KJ4YZI. What's up, YouTube? Eric with Ham Radio Concepts. I finally have the radio I've always wanted, the Yaesu FT817. All mode, all band, QRP, portable radio, HF through UHF. Uh, this thing has everything. Um, this is actually the 817 model. Now there are two, the 817 and the 817ND. I was going to purchase an 817ND actually on the used gear section on Gigaparts, but I found one of these locally, so I chose this, but you can find uh, both of them out there. And uh, this one here is, let me explain the difference, because a lot of people ask, what's the difference between the 817 and the ND model? Basically a couple things. One, the ND comes with 60 meters, whereas the 817 does not. Uh, the ND comes with a rechargeable battery pack, whereas the 817 originally came with a AA battery holder. Now this does have the rechargeable battery pack in it, so that's half the battle right there. Uh, as well as a different final output stage, or better transistors, there was an issue where um, the original finals in these radios were going bad. And, I, and I'm gonna guess that it was, you know, if your SWR is high, I mean, if you're not using a tuner, you, you possibly, uh, damage the radio, the finals, as well as people, you, there's a way you can read online to go in and up the power to 10 watts. Guys, don't do that. It's a QRP radio. It's designed for 5 watts. They are 16 watt finals together, but if that was the case, the AC would have designed it for that. Um, so leave it at the 5 watts, right? But basically, 160, 80, 75, 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, 12, 10, 6, 2 meters, and UHF. I mean, it's the most compact radio you can get with everything. And it is QRP, so um, it, it's got the the uh, shoulder strap here, the AC shoulder strap, which is pretty cool. Um, the microphone that comes with it is not the DTMF microphone. It's actually the uh, MH31, uh, which I don't need the DTMF, but if you need it for DTMF tones on UHF or VHF, you can opt for that. Um, but We'll go over, uh, I'm gonna stay subscribed because I'm gonna make several videos. I got about four or five videos I'm gonna make on this. I'm building a go kit. Uh, I'm gonna do some QRP, some PSK, stuff like that. So uh, stay subscribed and you'll see this in the next few videos. Um, to, to look at the radio here, let's zoom in on the screen. A lot of people say, well, the screen's a little bit small. It is, um, but you know, it shows you just what you need. Your voltage on the top, uh, your mode, your frequency, and the S meter on the bottom. Um, now. I'm trying to answer some questions that I had to research when I found this. So uh, let's look at this icon blinking here, okay? The radio, when you use an internal battery supply, it defaults to 2.5 watts. Now, you can use this external power or internal battery power, um, but when you use internal battery power, it defaults to 2.5 watts. So now that would, the reason it's blinking now is because I have it set for five watts. When you turn the radio off, uh, and you turn it back on, it should default to 2.5 watts. In this case, no, it's staying to five, okay. But um, basically, you would hit the, let me zoom out here. You would hit the function button, okay, and you change the select knob till you get to power, right here. Now when you get to power, you hit the A button, all right? Now that solid is 2.5, one watt, a tenth of a watt and then five watts blinking. I didn't know that. I figured that it was on uh, five watts by default, but it's not. So that's uh, one thing I had to learn. Also, um, about charging this, okay, and, and <laughs> uh, I plugged this in and figured it was charging, however it wasn't. And what I had to find was when you hold, or just tap charge, uh, tap the function button again, and change the select knob to charge, right here. Now, when you push A, it's gonna beep. Now, when you shut this radio off and plug it in, you're gonna hear it charge. If you don't do that, um, it's just not going to work. It's gonna assume you're just plugging it in for external DC power. It's not gonna charge the internal battery. So that got me a couple times where I had to, uh, I was wondering, wow, well, it charged all night. Why is the battery dead? Um, so that's uh, one thing there to, to, to look at. Um, the, a lot of it's menu driven. There's a lot of stuff in the menu. I mean, if you hold the function button, 
There's a lot of things in here that you could change. Let me go over the battery charge here. The radio does not have a charging circuit built in. So depending on the size of the battery that you have, the milliamps an hour, um, you would set this for a 10 hour charge, an eight hour, I'm sorry, eight hour charge or a six hour charge. And the reason is because if not, it would sit there and charge constantly until the battery just gave up, I guess. Um, so without a charging circuit built in, if you have a high capacity battery pack, you'd set it to 10 hour charge and it's gonna have a timer when you plug it in, you'll see how long it's charging. A um, little quirk there, but not a big deal. Um, some other setting, settings in here for, you know, cat control, um, your color. This one does have orange and blue. The uh, ND model adds a third color. So that's one difference between the ND and the regular one. Um, you can set a bunch of uh, features in here, including um, your microphone gain in here, FM mic gain, uh, sideband mic gain, and AM mic gain. You can set in the menu here. Um, the radio does take a filter, one filter at a time. You can get a Collins aftermarket Yesu Collins sideband filter or CW filter, or you can get a uh, high stability crystal oscillator, uh, even a DSP board that someone makes uh, aside from Yesu. So you can get those uh, to put in the radio to help increase the uh, effectiveness and the uh, specifications of the radio. So there's a BNC on the front. Let me zoom out. BNC on the front and a BNC on the back. Uh, yeah, a SO239 on the back, which I have. Let me take a look at the back here and I'll show you. I do have the adapter, um, SO239 to BNC, right angle. Now, here's the battery input. Note this grounding screw. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Okay, that's very important. And not just for a ground, but I'll show you why. Uh, your key for CW here your data, which would be for uh, cat control, accessory. So you have your ports in the back here. Um, the BNC on the back and the BNC on the front, one little thing I did before I realized is you have to go into the menu and you have to change the antenna connector from rear or front. So I, I had something plugged in right there, rear antenna. I had something plugged in, didn't realize uh, it was set for the, the front, so I had to change it to the rear. All right, so just do that in case you think there's something wrong. Double check that. A lot of people stand the radio up, and they put a they stand it up on its back, and they put the antenna straight out the top. Others use a, uh, a BNC right angle in the back, like I do. Um, but overall, I mean, very easy to uh, get involved. You know, changing the band. Let's see, get out of function here. Change the band up or down mode, sideband, CW, uh, AM, FM, digital, packet, all right, all modes. You even get uh, sideband on VHF, UHF, which I've always wanted to try, uh, so I'll be trying that one day. Clarifier, so I mean, it's, 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 it is uh, menu intense as far as the settings. Not a lot of buttons or knobs on the front to control what you need. Um, so let me show you a couple uh, connect, uh, antennas that I have. I have a couple MFJ antennas and they are actually, I'm surprised, I'll show you a video. Last night I was uh, on the radio on 10 meters and uh, made some contacts here at QRP. But uh, let me show you these antennas and how they work. Let's talk about the antenna that comes with it. The 817 comes with a rubber duck here with a BNC. And basically you have your base section and there should be a little section that goes on top and this would make your 2 meter 440 antenna. Then they give you the optional 6 meter stub which would go on to add length for 6 meters. Now the manual does say this antenna in this situation will work on VHF, UHF and 6 meters. It's just a little bit longer. Um, so I've noticed that because it's a used radio I'm not, I don't have that little piece but no big deal. Uh, and the radio or the antenna can be used on this radio like a handheld. Okay, you can use it like this with a microphone and talk just like you would a handheld. Um, you can put it on the back and use it as a base rig. But to 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 give you an idea, this this operates like a uh, a VHF handheld. Okay, it's it's coupling with your body to use your body as sort of a counterpoise. When you use something like this. 
Okay, this is, uh, these are individual telescopic cam sticks by MFJ. This is the 40 meter, this is the 20 meter, and these are BNC. Now these are cool, they're, they're cheap, uh, they work great, and they're adjustable. So now you can take this 20 meter stick here, pull it all the way out, attach it to your radio, like this, okay? And now you have your ham stick on the radio, but here's something that you have to know. You have to have a counterpoise. The counterpoise is not gonna work with you holding the radio. So that's why I had mentioned the screw on the back with the wire. This is very important. There's a, there's a formula, you have to do 180 divided by frequency in megahertz equals the length of the wire for the counterpoise, okay? And without that properly measured, you're gonna have a high SWR, you're gonna have a poor receive, poor operating conditions. This antenna does work. I have made a contact with it on QRP. But again, uh, 180 divided by 14.3, I think is like 12 and a half feet that you would have. And you could just have it attached to your radio, laying on the ground, you know, um, but it's gotta have a counterpoise wire. And you'll notice that your SWR can be tuned to just about uh, to 1.1 with the proper counterpoise wire. 10 meters is uh, 6.3 feet. So uh, your 40 meter antenna here would be upwards of 25 or 30 feet for a counterpoise wire. Same length on the 40 meter, just a different base load coil that adds length electrically in the coil on the bottom to achieve 40 meters on a stick. So these sticks are great. They, they collapse into a very small form um, and you can get them for every band. So great to have. And what I'll show you in the next video, but just a quick look, is this is the MFJ 1899, and this is a all band, uh, not all band, but 80 through 2 meter uh, telescopic whip with a tap. So check out the next video to see this. Uh, but let's, um, I'll show you the contact actually I made with this antenna on 10 meters. Uh, we'll show you that now. Uh, name is Eric, Echo Romeo India Charlie. Call is Kilo Juliet 4 Yankee Zulu India, uh, Sebastian, Florida, about 50 miles south of Cape Canaveral on the east coast. Go ahead. Okay, fine, dude. Uh, 50 miles south of Cape Canaveral. I was back down that way not too long ago. We went on a cruise out of the Port Canaveral there back in uh, late August. So, anyway, yeah, that portable's doing fine. I got the beam pointed south, so that's probably why I heard you when you first come in there use about an S2 to an S3. Now you fell down to nothing, but I don't have any noise, so I'm still hearing you pretty good. Yeah, QSL, you're at S8 right now on my little FT817. Uh, again, completely battery power with a MFJ1899 telescopic uh, whip directly on the back of the radio. Um, Five watts, so uh, it's doing the job for sure. Yeah, it sounds good too. Sounds real good. I'd say that uh, if you that thing up to a three element beam or whatever and pointed it north, they know what kind of good it is. But I'm up here about 25 miles east of Asheville. Here at the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains, and the name is Rick Romeo India Charlie Kilo. Go ahead and try to make you a few more there, Eric. That thing sounds pretty good. Take care, seven three. This is Kilo Romeo Four Echo X-ray. Thank you, Rick. Very good. Uh, seven three, and uh, I will uh, put this on YouTube here eventually, and I'll send you a link, and you can check out what you sound like on the other end. 7-3 from Kilo Juliet 4, Yankee, Zulu, India, Portable QRP. Give me your call again and I'll look for it on YouTube. Let me write it down. Kilo Juliet 4 or what? Yankee, Zulu, India. If you just type in Ham Radio Concepts, you will find my channel. And uh, Ham Radio Concepts is uh, has all the info on there. I got it, man. Have a good evening. 7 3, take care. Kilo Juliet 4, Yankee Zulu, India. This is Kilo Romeo 4 Echo X ray. Here's the 
FNB85, 1650 milliamp hour nickel metal hydride rechargeable battery. So again, you can use AA, uh, AA case in here, and there are some aftermarket batteries with higher capacity. I've noticed about a couple hours with this battery pack on five watts. Uh, not all, I mean, maybe maybe you can receive for half the day or most of the day, but transmitting, you only get maybe a couple hours of uh, call and CQ on that kind of battery. Uh, if I go to FM, right, and I just hit the button real quick on five watts, see there's no bars there. My SWR is flat. Now if I take this antenna and I just pull the top out because I have it pushed in a little bit, watch how it changes the SWR. Okay? So it's a little high there. So that would mean a lower portion of the a lower part of the band would be flat. So I just push the top back in about three inches right there. And that's the best way to get your efficiency out of your QRP rig as well as not to damage your finals. I mean, the difference on five watts between a three to one SWR and a one to one is very uh, detrimental if you want to make contacts. Um, you know, you, you want to, if you lose two watts, you're only using a three watt rig, you know? So guys, I uh, hope you liked the video so far on the 817. This is one of many. I have a bunch of videos I'm going to put up with my Go Kit, operating PSK with this QRP. Uh, but it's just so fun to be able to have an, a radio like this with an antenna where you can just be portable and make HF contacts with a telescopic antenna. I mean, you can use dipoles and you can use a beam, you can use a quad. You could use a, a cobweb on this, but it's just so fun, I think, to be on the beach or on a mountain, uh, uh, summits on the air, and have this thing with a whip, 5 watts, and a microphone, and make contacts. Uh, if you're a CW enthusiast, it's even better for that. So, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Uh, I do have a link to a Patreon site that I have now, so anything that you feel you've learned from my videos, uh, you could always support me and future videos by checking out my Patreon link, which is in the description. I just set that up. But uh, more videos on the way, so stay tuned. 7-3 from KJ4YZI.